five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kev on stage. She's Chick AJ. Welcome to another podcast banger, episode. Banger, smash banger, that like banger, button. Smash banger, that notification banger, banger, button. Banger, bangers, 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 we gonna be in Ohio. For I'm, a long I'm not time. gonna be. We're gonna be in Ohio for a freaking week. Oklahoma I think we City. Claim residency when we leave. Yeah. yeah. Taxation purposes. Oklahoma City. You, you, you guys are looking ashy, as my boy Tony Baker would say. The rest of the shows are great, so I'm gonna be just doing light promo. It is what it is. Tis. I'm all promoted out. I'm focusing on the streaming service now. If you're coming. We'll see you there. At least in, at least in, this is my church announcement. Uh, what's his name? To here and I will only be taking pictures with those people purchasing merch or who have to purchase merch in advance from our website. So make sure you wear it and then we'll take a photo with you. But if not, because what's happening, Angel? What is happening? What is that? People are coming up. Oh, yeah. People are coming up, talking to us, sharing their love for us, which we appreciate. And then they're going to buy Kevin's merch or they're leaving. <laughs> Well, for the people that do want to buy merch that want to go home after the show, it takes yes. them longer to get the shirt and then go home. And also for me, I have we me and Tahir have to do another show a lot of times. This is happening. This is it takes a lot of energy. So not that we don't love the people who don't have the money to purchase stuff. I love you us. all. We love and that's why Kevin doesn't take any pictures with anyone. I love you guys so much. <laughs> That I give you everything I got for 45 minutes. <laughs> so if you, if you, and I'm talking about if you've purchased an angel wing pin, if you purchase mama likes, if you have anything that you purchased of mine, have it on your body and I'll have take a picture it on with your you. body or purchase something at the show. But uh, yes, we are body. not going to do anybody can get a picture no more. Love you. It's COVID. Not doing it. I'm tired. All right. First things first. This article came out in the Hollywood Reporter. Issa Rae says she was advised to add white characters, sh white characters to shows so white people will care. Her homegirl was like, girl, if you want this stuff to set off the next level, you got to put a white character in there. Then white people will care about it. And then NPR is going to write about your stuff and it'll blow up. And guess what she did? She did just that. Yep, she did it for Awkward Black Girl. Awkward Black Girl. She had a character named uh, White J mm -hmm. uh, who was in the series a lot yeah. uh, of the time. Yes, and she also had the We Got Y'all um, mm -hmm. whole setup where she worked. And then in Insecure... She, in the first season, maybe a little bit of the second season, uh, she worked at We Got Y'all. Yeah, she, We Got Y'all still uh, existed. Uh -huh. And then when she quit that job, it became all black. It got real <laughs> black. They added an Asian for a little bit of extra flavor. But that is about oh, it. Oh, Molly's, uh, Molly's boot, yeah. Mm -hmm. But as far as the white people in there, it dropped tremendously yeah. after that thing. And I, I listen, I like that storyline. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't even notice um I didn't really notice that there was not that many white characters after that. I just figured she quit her job and that was the only time she really interacted with white people. Uh -huh. And when that storyline went away, I wasn't like, oh, where's the white people? But I'm also not white. Mm -hmm. uh, the craziest thing about this headline is that it worked. Mm. Right. That really shows you how it is to navigate Hollywood as a black person. Mm -hmm. Like now that she's who she is, she can do whatever she wants. Because her next show, uh, rap stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's going to have to do that. No. And I've, I think she's shown HBO in the world that, you know, you don't have to have white uh, people for people to care. But it's also something that I don't like um, about Hollywood. Hollywood seems to think that only the race that the show is featured in is who will watch it. Yeah. I know so many people and I'm not I'm talking about like. So many black people who watch love Seinfeld. Seinfeld is not a, uh, about black people. Not they enough. actually have for, for sitcoms. They had the uh, that and Curb actually have a lot of black characters in them, mm. like speaking roles, guest stars and things like that. More than like friends in comparison. Mm. But I wouldn't say it's a show for black people. Absolutely. Not. Uh, Game of Thrones is. <laughs> huh? I said that show was terrible. Seinfeld. Yes. I couldn't get into it like people did. It's My people. Boring. I just, I, I, I just, I don't dislike it, but it's I do not like fully dislike it. Really? I hate their voices. I hate their approach to life. You don't like Kramer? You hate their approach to yeah. life. Yes. <laughs> just I love Kramer's franticness. 
willy nilly making mistakes because you're white. You'll rebound. Get it together. That's fair. There's nothing to lose. <laughs> they, they yes, all, but no that's matter, that's true no for whiteness. How much struggling in that show, they're always just fine. Yes, yeah. I don't dislike it. I don't feel as strongly as you do. I feel like um, I feel like I was a victim of the hype effect. Uh, everybody at all deaf, black and white, just raved about it. Oh, Sanjay? you are going to yes, uh, Sanjay. Harris. That's their era, though. Yeah, but even black people, uh, Lejethro, he loves it. That's fair. I mean, Wale, people love Seinfeld. I only loved it because my dad always had it on. That was his show. Nostalgia. So there's, there's a, right, there's a nostalgia tied to me. I never fully got into it like, oh, I know every single episode. There's moments in the series that I'm familiar with, but it's. Not I like saw some episodes that were downright hilarious. Mm -hmm. There's. Mm -hmm. uh, Soup Nazi, the the librarian dude. Mm -hmm. They had a whole episode, which is kind of crazy. I think they get to white people always get to do stuff about nothing. They had a whole episode about losing a car in a parking lot, like a whole. Mm -hmm. I mean, a whole episode. Look at my um, face, boring. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, the point that I'm making is, uh, black people watch stuff that is all white. Ah, yeah, all, I've got Game tons of, of white shows I watch. Game of Thrones. HBO never marketed to us. No, but they said, if it's hot. If it's hot. And now, black people created our own hashtag called, uh, one of them was Damn Thrones mm -hmm. on black Twitter so the black people could follow what? Game you of Thrones are, yeah, yeah, yeah. with other black people. Mm -hmm. um, but black people, we don't often get to have shows. Of, I want, let me tell you what I want. Tell me. I want a black Napoleon Dynamite. Uh -huh. I want a black Nacho Libre. Where there's, there's just... Uh, super bad. Let's make mm -hmm. it, Kevin. Yeah, those are, they can be made. That's the Kevin on Stage Studios. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, but to navigate Hollywood, especially early, early, and even when Issa started Insecure, I feel like the the landscape has shifted even more since you know, even in the five years since her show. But I don't even know if that show gets on the air the same way or gets the same traction because she said in the article that NPR actually did write about it. Yeah. If you don't have the We Got Y'all storyline or the White J storyline, and that's kind of like reflective of how it is to be black in America, even all the way back into uh, slavery and uh, post-Civil War. Black people, we have to, to survive, literally to live. You had to find a way to navigate a white world. Oh, absolutely. This country is was... Uh, stolen and created to be a mm -hmm. white world. But what I was about to say, uh, Easter Ray, she she created with awkward black girl that was our Nacho Libre. Like the fact there is a narrative that is usually told about black women, and that is usually that we're sassy, which I don't mind. I am that we're extremely brave which I can be, I don't mind that, that we're extremely strong. But she told the story of a black girl that does exist that is never the archetype or stereotype that people usually write about. Yes. Which is, I am awkward. I don't know what to say. I don't have the quick comebacks. Yes. I, uh, I'm i not, like, super, like, confident in how I'm going to approach the world, which we should be allowed to be that too. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. And so I feel like, that was one of the reasons why specifically the web series Aqua Black Girl did so well. It was that it was one of the first times we got to see that even in shows that try to be diverse, the there's two roles. Well, let me see. I'll give you four roles that a black woman can play. She's either going to play the best friend that gives uh, good peer advice. She's going to be the oracle the kind of all knowing more maternal that mm -hmm. gives the advice that is just divine. That is off your water on C. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> 100%. She's going to be the super smart person. Uh, most intelligent if they don't give it to an Asian person. So it's between the two mm -hmm. or the, um, or yes, the, the sassy smart mouth. Don't cross her. Cause she'll cut you. There's never room to be the weak one. There's never room to be the awkward one. There's never room typically to be the goofy one. Not the funny. Funny we get to be. Like yeah, yeah. but goofy? Yeah. No. They're not they're not usually going to write that unless it's a bunch of other black people you're playing against. But if you're playing against other races, that is you not the role you're going to be able to fall into. That's actually so uh 1000% true. 
Oh, listen, I know what roles are available to me. Because you be auditioning for them. <laughs> yes, and luckily, I don't play those, the roles that, I mean, thank God for me, the roles that they don't be writing for us, I don't play well anyways. Mm -hmm. People be like, you know better, stop. <laughs> Just by my face, people be like, Angel know better. She don't even believe her. She, she knows what she's supposed to be doing. Totally unrelated. Mm -hmm. Back to Seinfeld for one second. There was a episode where George did the opposite of everything he would have done and everything worked out. It was very funny, Angel. <laughs> did you I, watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? I tried. You didn't oh, like it either? I tried. That pilot was... <sighs> boring? That pilot was painful. I'm binging it now and I realize it's hard to binge. Larry is a lot. Episode after episode saying. after episode after episode. It's like, okay, well, nobody would do that every time. You let something go. But he don't he don't let nothing go mm. ever. But he actually he has a lot more black people than than more shows than I thought too. I just thought that was interesting. I was like, look at Larry and uh Larry and Jerry. Larry and Jerome. Mm. Jerome Seinfeld. <laughs> I just can't do I can't the Seinfeld. I thought was boring, and also the voices really. Yeah, Larry, uh, Jerry's voice early. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then jo and then George. Ah, God! I mean, <laughs> their voices, even Elaine's. I'm telling you, their voices were like nails on a chalk. Really? Oh my God! The hair was really something. Jerry's hair at the beginning. Whoo! That was in the same style as Tim the Toolman Taylor, which was my show. Now that. That's the show I got into. Uh, yes. Uh, that was I mean, good television. You talk, little Kevin thought this was, this, this joke, uh, I best. thought you couldn't do anything funnier to me. That was the best. Wilson, you'll never see his face. Yeah. He's so wise. And then J, uh, JT, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Boy, wasn't he everything at that time? Oh, he was just the cutest thing ever. He was simple, wasn't he? Was that his voice? I think he was Simba, and Jason Weaver was singing, was uh, singing. singing Simba. He was cute, regardless. Yeah, he was mm. him. Him and the brothers remind me of Three Ninjas. They look like the same version of uh, yeah. Three and Three Ninjas was my movie, my set of movies. Mm -hmm. Rocky loves Emily. Mm -hmm. I was all in. Mighty Ducks. What happened to those movies? Those movies. Well, everything. They are the reason Mighty why Ducks. I wanted Mighty to be Ducks. in that. Sandlot. D2 was my favorite D2. one. D2. Little, the Black Squad on Mighty Ducks. Come Emilio on. Estevez as the, yes. the bad coach. and I mean. Well, first of all, though, I just realized that I am living home improvement. Damn near. What do you mean? I am the wife with all the boys, with the husband that wants to fix cars and do a home, uh, like a make- a uh, show. tool show. He, 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 Marcus could absolutely make tool time. This is with Greg as uh. What as was Heidi? his boy's name? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! As uh, I put Greg as Heidi in the little shorts. That's not uh. What was his name? Was it Al? Yeah, Al Morland. Al. Al. Tim and Al. That's Greg Goose and Tank. T tool time. You are the mom. I'm definitely. The mom with some sense. Yes. Oh my gosh. You are the mom of. Yeah. But Marcus just wants to make a whiskey cabinet <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> by hand. And, and and he wants another old car, but he already has an old car. That is. And the old cars can't fit the kids, Marcus. No, no, they don't he don't want care. it to fit the kids. He does not care. Yeah, that's the life I'm living. I just realized that. Al Moreland. Borland. No, I was right. Borland. Yep. Man. Yeah, I was talking about that. We had, we had, we had the Sandlot, the Goonies, Ugh. Little Giants, yeah, the Mighty Ducks movies. Mighty Ducks was great, and then uh, the Little Rascals, with uh, you know the original one. Uh, I wouldn't even really you didn't watch that one. Not really. Little Rascals with Dear Darla. Yeah, I remember. I hate it. your guts. Mm, you I make me vomit. We had uh. Home Alone. Oh, yes. We had all those kids' movies, and all then you know what ruined it? Toy Story. Once Toy Story came out, oh, yeah, like, what's children's doing? movies became either 2D animation or Pixar, and they were like, little kids' movies, you're out. Celebrity voices for kids' stuff, you're in, and that was it. Well, they, they don't make the big, like, blockbuster ones. They still make them. Like, Disney will make movies based off of, like, 
their television Oh, shows. yeah, but those suck. I'm not talking about those. Oh, I still love those. The Sandlot? I have yet to see another movie similar You're killing to me, Smiles? High School Musical was great. It's not the Sandlot, Angel. <laughs> there's a, there's a High little... School, I look what like a dude right now with these curls. <laughs> Corbin Blue. I look oh, like Blue. Blue. Uh, there's a clip where they uh, a black dude says something. <laughs> they do that thing. Uh, Stick to what you know or something on. like that. And every time an NBA player, yes, "Ah." every time an NBA player says something stupid, somebody on Twitter tweets in that video. (laughs) And as rude as it is, I'd be so guilty for laughing. Uh, What's I about to say? Uh, Brisha did. They did. MTV tried to do a version of High School Musical called American Mall. And Brisha was in it. Really? Yes. Like it wasn't a parody? No. They really did their own version. Yes. Like community to the office. Yes. But it all took place in a mall. The whole time? <laughs> American she, mall? Yes, the whole time. In a mall. She had to sing and dance. <laughs> Be in a bikini. I'm a high schooler. I dance. I do pirouettes. I'm a young kid. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I should make my kids watch. Kids Incorporated. We should, we, I should force them to go back and watch those 90s. Uh, I still say the annexation of Puerto Rico all the time. Not all the time. That was a special play on Little Giants. Oh, I don't remember Little Giants like that. Oh. I mean, we're getting older, though. That's the reason why these movies ain't out. These kids don't want these movies. Them kids is on drugs. Them, them movies are going to die with us. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. And I hope we have a, a insurance, life insurance, That's when right. we do die. From Policy Genius. Policy Genius! Now, let me make it clear. Policy Genius doesn't give out policies. They help you find the right policy for you. Para you. Um, the fact of the matter is, most people need 10 times the life insurance coverage that they get through their employer. Your employer is not going to actually give you enough to be able to take care of your family the way you would want to take care of them in the event that you pass and your income was an important part of their livelihood. So Policy Genius, what they do is they compare quotes from over a dozen top uh, insurers all in one place. And the reason why you want to be able to compare and have this is that you could really save like 50% or more on life insurance by comparing the quotes with Policy Genius. That is like saving 1300 or more per year on life insurance. That is more than what they're giving in these uh, stimulus checks. Okay? Sure is, Angel. And po- Policy Genius is like, we've been doing that for a while. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> saving people money. You feel right? Um, so licensed experts at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance company, so you can trust them to help you navigate every step from shopping and the buying process. And um, their uh, service is so great that they have earned thousands of five-star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. And eligible applicants can get as covered as a, as little as a week Think, excuse me, the, <laughs> eligible applicants can be covered in as little as a week. Thanks to their award-winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam requirement for a simple phone call. And they have been rated number one by Forbes Advisor, which is higher than options like lad, Ladder, Ethos, or Bestow. So this is how it works. Getting started is easy. First, you're going to head to Policy Genius, and then in minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare and personalize quotes to find your best price. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. Policy Genius does not add on extra fees, so this is what we want you to do. Hit what do you need to do, Angel? Angel, to tell me. I would like to know. Policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Get it right. All right, next thing on the docket. We very rarely, if ever, talk sports Mm. on here. But um, I've been following this for the last week or so, and it just, it snowballed yesterday. Raiders coach John Gruden resigned yesterday after a series of homophobic, racist, and misogynistic emails surfaced. Mm, mm, mm. New York Times did a whole expose on him that dropped yesterday. And I promise you within about two hours, the next thing I saw Gruden resigns. Mm. So a week or two ago, I think a week, uh, an email came out where he was talking about DeMari, DeMaurice Smith, 
who is the head of the NFL Players Association, black uh-huh. dude, and he said that dumb Morris Smith, that was his first thing, he called him dumb Morris, right? Poopy head type stuff. Okay. Dumb Morris Smith had lips the size of the Michelin man. Wow. Okay. People were like, yo, that's wild racist. He was like, racist? I don't have a racist bone in my body. Where do the racist bones come from also? Just I don't cur- know. Who has a racist bone in their I don't, body? I don't know how you get them. I have no idea if they grow in, like when you get your legs extended to be taller. What Is happens? that the racist bone that they yeah. extend? Yeah. No one knows. He's no. like, I don't have a blade of racism. Racist people always don't have a racist bone in their body. Their tongue is not a bone. <laughs> Neither is the brain. Come on, Kevin. Neither is the heart. Neither is the blood. So, yes, <laughs> your bones are great. It's the organs that we really have the problem with. The bones just help you stay up straight and walk. Come on. So the racism, he wasn't suspended. He coached the next game. He apologized. They were moving on. Mm -hmm. Then they went through his emails. Some of which he sent on company emails. He's having a good time. Oh, he rounded the bases of racism, homophobia, Ah! misogyny. He was like, I'm an equal opportunist. Oh, you are? Bigot. An equal opportunist bigot. I'm giving it out for everybody. I'm just siphon through some of the things he thought that he said. Uh, he said, uh, let's start what here. He say? denounced the emergence of women as referees. That's the women. You're out. Wow. He denounced the drafting of a gay player. The tolerance of players protesting during the playing of the national anthem. Okay. Uh, when he was talking about Commissioner Robert Goodell, he called the league's commissioner a racial slur, wow. the big one, the wow. F one. Wow. And a clueless anti-football coochie. He chose the coochie word that begins with a P. He said that Goodell should not have pressured Jeff Fisher, then coach of the Rams, to draft queers, a reference to Michael Sam, a gay player chosen by the team in 2014. This is in one section. Okay. Oh. Later on, he said that Eric Reed, a player who demonstrated during the national anthem, should be fired. He used the homophobic slur to refer to Goodell, offensive language to some NFL owners, coaches, and journalists who cover the league. Okay, let's see. Let me scroll down. Also, the first openly, openly gay NFL player plays for the Raiders. Pictures of him dapping him up resurfaced. Uh, what else did he say? He said that in an interview referring to safety, he called Goodell an expletive. He disapproved of Goodell's emphasis on safety, which he believes was scaring parents into steering their kids away from football. He exchanged emails with Allen, Bruce Allen, who's owning the, I believe, the Redskins or the Washington football team. They used to be called the Redskins, Mm -hmm. including photos of women only wearing bikini bottoms. One photo of the Washington team cheerleaders. He criticized Obama during his reelection campaign in 2012 and called Vice President Joseph Biden a nervous, clueless coochie. That starts with a P. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Who was he emailing? All this he to? was emailing other owners, other football owners. One, the other guy already got uh, fired or left the league. Who uh, sends this stuff in an email? Let me tell you what, white men. And here's the first thing I want to say, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts. This is why the league just gave Colin Kaepernick that money Mm -hmm. because if they had to go through discovery and open up all the coaches' emails, they were going to have to write a check for $10 billion. Mm -hmm. And the only thing worse than this coming out is if the emails of the rest of the coaches came out. Oh, yeah. If they got to the emails of Jerry Jones, (laughs) buddy, all them Huayite gentlemen, Mm -hmm. The only thing that could be worse for the NFL than one coach's emails is all of them. Is all of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, you want to know why they got Kendrick Lamar, Dr. Dre, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> Snoop Listen. on the Super Bowl? Whew. They're like, we got to do something, guys. <laughs> we do something. I all right, mean, go ahead, Angel. It's obviously they're not surprised he says all this stuff. The fact that he made the comment about the dude's lips. But they were just like, Psh. It's fine. Black lips. Yeah, <laughs> oh no, he's using homophobic homophobic <laughs> slurs. Homophobic. <laughs> he's using homophobic slurs. Oh my god, we gotta get you out of here now. Granted, he was using everything else. He too. 
emptied the clip of homophobia, racism, and misogyny. Yes. He left no stone unturned. He was just like, let's let I am an equal opportunist, uh, opportunist with this hate. Everybody can get some. Every single person can get some. And they are, they paid this man so much money. A hundred million. He had a 10 year, a hundred million dollar contract, Angel Tanksley. This is why they'll never get better. He already made 30. I if, Let me tell you, if I was getting paid $100 million, there's nothing I would do to improve myself. <laughs> I'm perfect the way I am. Perfect in my thinking. Perfect in the way I look. I am not changing anything. <laughs> I couldn't even fathom a contract for $100 million. I, I, I'm, I, what I'm telling you, that is at $100 million, I've reached... The Lord must be getting ready to call me home because you I've know transcended. How many Lexus trucks would be in your fleet? Andy? Oh, I would own Lexus. <laughs> you would have one in every county, just to ensure that there would be one. There. I absolutely. Where's my truck? Why isn't it here to pick me up? Don't pick me up in your black <laughs> service. Get my truck, and I want to ride in it. No, like it is. Um, everybody's saying this is a uh, kind of what Dave Chappelle was pointing to of. You, the only the reason why I say this is just a little bit different is that he unlo- and le- unloaded the clip on everyone. He also quit. Yes. He resigned. I mean. Yes. He was going to get fired. It's, it was a forced resignation. I yes. think it's just semantics on quitting or resigning. Uh-huh. You, don't, you don't get away with this. Um, I still didn't finish Dave's um, thing, but I think the point that I've seen the clips and stuff, and I think the point that Dave was making was that you can be racist against black people. I mean, we've said this, though. Yeah. It's before Dave's special. Mm-hmm. You don't want to come for the LGBTQ plus community. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, you're not coming back from that. No. You can come. You can you you can come for black people and still survive. Can, yeah. He Apparently, was he was surviving. I mean, he talked about the baby killing somebody and surviving that. Like nothing happened with his career. No, it probably yeah. helped. Yeah. Well, he's a rapper <laughs> and it was self-defense. Yeah. Killing him in a Walmart is wild. Mm-hmm. I remember when I heard that story, I was like, come on, man. Y'all just be making up stuff. And then I read it. I was like, oh, he really killed somebody in a, like, really? Gucci man, too. He killed somebody in self-defense? Yeah. For a rapper, that's He's a prison. He's out now. He yeah. Just time. That's not even why he went to prison. No, mm-hmm. I know, but I'm just saying he went to prison and he's out. Yeah. The thing about, um, uh, hey, I got a pimple. I was going to ask you if you had a pimple. Yeah, I'm scared. Kevin. <laughs> no, not today. I was going to ask you the other day because I have a pimple. <laughs> and I was going to be like, Kevin, you got a pimple, don't you? God damn it. Those are contagious, are they? I don't know, but the last time I had a big one, you had a big one. I got one right here. I know. think me and Kevin's are, cycles are aligning. You just. <laughs> 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 You're like, it's that time. Yeah, ah! we're- Recycling in. Angel! I did. I got a pimple. From though. you? I, but I love you. I got a pimple on my cheek, and I was like, I need to ask Kev. I meant, uh, Kev, I meant to ask you the other day, why do you do you have a pimple? <laughs> um, I, what I feel like is that with the LGBTQ community, they have made allies in very powerful places, yeah. or they themselves are in very powerful yeah. places, where... We don't really be having allies. We we be half the time don't even be having ourselves. Yes. We be like, you got my, oh, you don't have my back. Oh, okay. That's, <laughs> that's really what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, if we can be quite honest, the history of black people in this country, they didn't care about us. <laughs> no, they didn't care nothing about us. There was a war to keep us enslaved. Not that long ago. No. After that, if you look through, I mean, really look through America's history. It is a history of slavery continuing from the plantations into the prison, into the prison. The slavery to prison pipeline. Mm-hmm. Right. It's that it's the whole black fathers not in the home when it was designed to be yeah, like that. To be that way. You have redlining, you have discrimination, you have fear tactics, you have terrorism. I mean, all of that to us. 
still suffering. You have something in the NFL called the Rooney Rule, which means you have to interview a certain amount of uh, uh, black head coaches before you can hire one. And they just be, all right, you're the black interview, 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 great, great. All right, white dude. Now you know what you interviewed, Angel. Yeah. We had no intention, but you, we want this job. Mm-hmm. Were you racist in emails? So was I. Welcome Ooh. to the club. <laughs> yeah, you sent them to me. I see CG. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, I, I don't want to say it's not news, but we don't have as many allies in powerful positions. Um, and from what I understand, um, Actually, I don't feel confident in saying that, so I'm not going to. Because I don't want to tiptoe into a way where I don't know what I stand. But um, we don't have protection. And there's not repercussions for us, for for trespassing against us, like yeah. there is for other communities. Mm-hmm. Right? And, that I mean, the John Gruden thing, once that other stuff came out, it, you knew it was over. Mm-hmm. When you, When the racism stuff came out, you didn't know it was over. Mm-hmm. Right. It's it's not always like that. It's happened to pop stars. And I'm even kind of guilty of this. Um, I'm definitely am guilty of this. We're all hypocrites, I believe. Uh, Justin Bieber, when he was a kid, he had that video where he was saying nigga uh, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of times. And I didn't see it at the time, but I saw it later. And I was like, this is you, Justin. You're, you're out. You're out. And then um, the trust album came out, and I did I did listen purpose. to did you a it? purpose album. Yeah, yeah I just was he like, said, okay. Dang, man, you know what I'm saying? People got to grow. People got to grow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somebody's bitching it in here, and I do want to comment on it because I don't want it to be ignored. They were saying how sometimes though we miss the interse- intersectionality of being a queer or gay person who is also black. Oh, so yeah. when we say LGBTQ, a lot of times it feels like we are ign- ignoring the fact that black people or people of color that are a part of the um, queer and gay community or trans community are not receiving the same type of benefits and protection that it now seems like white LGBTQ community uh, members are receiving. And I do acknowledge that. That is 1000% true Mm -hmm. in some way. And in most ways that intersection of black and gay Uh means you are the most marginalized because you're black and you're gay, you're black and gay. And when the gay community wins, you don't often rise or win at, you know, at at the same rate. That's actually what I was going to say that I didn't want to, that I didn't say Mm -hmm. Uh, white and gay people they they have powerful positions. Yes. And that's what prevents you from talking crazy uh-huh. um, about them. Right. And black and gay people. Oh, they at the back of all the fights. If, yeah. if it, when it comes to the, the strides that being made for gay rights, they being back when it comes to strides being made for black rights, we'd be like, Hey, Hey, wait, <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> No, I completely, I completely acknowledge that. I think when there is a majority inside, well, not a majority because black people still are the minority, but when there is another minority in a subgroup, that minority gets shoved to the back. Even when you think about the feminist movement, black women are at the back of the feminist movement, even though we are the one doing the most work in pushing the feminist. That's what happened in the women's suffrage movement. Uh, Susan B. Anthony was like, listen, black women, we is not talking about y'all right now. uh, We are talking about white women. Okay, we can't get black women and white women together. You're right. And we not, no, I mean, we say all women, but you know. We ain't talking about you. That's it's why my founders had to be at that women's suffrage march. I don't think they were invited. They just showed up. They said, what, what you're not about to do is keep ignoring us. <laughs> when we say all women, we mean all white women. <laughs> They're like, don't you get it? You we know that. Mean, all whites matter. All of it. Uh, but, yeah, no. It is definitely something that I I apologize for not acknowledging in the statement that I made, but I do recognize that that is a different story when you are a person of color and also a uh, part of the LGBTQ community. So yeah. my apologies. I have never walked in that uh, person's shoe like that, so I don't know the experience, but I have walked in Rothy's, and they are comfortable. Rothy's shoes <laughs> are an amazing shoe. I have a couple of them. They're perfect travel shoes. They're super duper comfortable. Okay. They uh well, first of all, they now sell men's shoes. So let's get let's get we started. We in there, right there. Rothy's! You got we got this I got this buddy over here with uh 
What's it called? Plantar fasciitis. 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 Yes, he do. He got in the, his shoe fashion is about to go into the toilet, but thanks to Rothy's, it don't have to. Mm. These shoes are comfortable. They're machine washable. They're sustainable, and they come in cool colors and classic styles that you'll want to wear everywhere. I really do like my Rothy's because, you know, I ain't got cute toes. Okay. So just be honest, Angel. I, they're not cute. Thank God for this face because these toes is booger wolf. They are <laughs> booger wolf is such an old term. <laughs> okay. Um, but and so different shoes will irritate McCorns, Bunyans, Rothy's. Do not. I can listen, these expensive designer shoes that I'd have bought. Oh, they are cute to walk to a table and sit down. Rothy's is like, oh, you need to get through the airport fast. Mm -hmm. Put us on. You ain't going to have no marks on your feet. You're going to be comfortable. All right. And then also what's great is that they're machine washable. So you can take out the insole, take the shoe, throw them inside of the washing machine, take them out. And they're just like new clean, smelling good every time. Um, and it's because they have innovative washable construction. So you ain't got to worry about them things falling apart. Um, also, Rothy's just launched their first ever collection of accessories for men. Wallets, carrying bags, card cases. It has everything you need for everyday carry essentials. Um, oh, I can't say that because it's in your set. No more worrying about keeping your wallet clean after weeks of wear. Rothy's wallets are fully machine washable too. Okay, so. Get get Rothy's for you or your man or a man. Get them for you and get them for your boo too. So to help uh, you welcome the fall season in style, Rothy's is doing something special. That's right. They gave us a chance to share their super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time. Right now you can get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash SK. That's great. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash S-K. S-K. Head to Rothy's dot com slash S-K. S-K. To find your new favorites today. You know, last week um, I had the opportunity to either go to lunch with my wife or do a podcast. And I was like, man, I really want to go to lunch, but I really have to do the podcast. And guess what? I found a better choice. We re-aired an old podcast and went to brunch. And that was the choice that was right for me. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to losing weight, there's a lot of pressure out there to label foods good or bad, podcast or brunch, okay? But that just creates unnecessary dilemmas, okay? Mm -hmm. And Noom is here to change how you see food with a psychology-based approach that looks at what you eat, but also how you eat. Instead of making you feel guilt or regret, Noom empowers you to get going, to keep going. Listen, I have started since the beginning of this month uh, working out consistently. Mm -hmm. I've added weight training back because I tend to lose a little bit more mm -hmm. when I incorporate weight training. And, you know, I'm, my face looking a little slimmer. You may not notice. You know, my belly's about 1.2% less. Okay. You know, now that's tough to see if you don't see it every day. But I asked, listen, I said, I'm a better looking. She's about 1, 2, 1 to 2% less. Maybe 1.2, probably somewhere in the middle, 1.2% less. And listen, Noom has helped me with that. But guess what? There's no good or bad food. So last night after eating brown rice and grilled chicken for dinner and a little bit of broccoli, uh, I looked over at the table and my son was enjoying some Oreos. And I said, hmm, I do like them. And usually when I eat Oreos, I take a sleeve to the head. Okay, that's going to be about 14 cookies. Full sleeve? I take a sleeve. One of them rows is gone. I mean, that's a choice. I got to take the middle row out because if you don't eat the middle row, it, it, when it closes good, it ain't going to be fresh. Okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start off with two, but that's just to get my beak wet. Okay? Then I'm going to hit four, and then, okay, I can't leave it with an even number. I got to go, got to leave it on ah, so I'm going to take five. Well, when you take five, you're a third of the way through the sleeve. Okay? I'm going to go upstairs, act like I'm done, come back later, let me get five more, and I'm done. I promise myself I'm done. Okay, I'm going to go to bed. I'm so tired, but I can't sleep. You know what's going to help me go to bed? Them last five. Boom. Sleeve done. Each time, I start out with just two cookies. Two cookies. But last night, you know what I did, Josh? What would you do, Ken? Well, I did end up with four cookies, but I started off with two. <laughs> But when you usually eat 15, four is a portion control sport. That's portion control. And I had water with them instead of milk and milk. 
Uh, and that's why I'm doing better. That's why the belly's down 1.2%. Look, you don't need rules to lose weight. Just the knowledge and wisdom to help you build smarter, more sustainable habits. Noom's cognitive behavior approach helps you unlearn bad habits and better understand your relationship with food. One size does not fit all. Oh, I done told y'all that about hats. When your head is my size, that one size fits most. And I ain't included. Where is the representation for large head community? 80% of the numbers finished the program and over 60% have stuck with their goals for at least a year. No need to fear ruining the whole program with just one off day. And we'll help you get back on track. All you need is daily 10 minute check in. No gru, no gruely early mornings or huge chunks out of your day. Now listen to this. Start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash SK. SK. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash SK. SK. Once again, noom.com slash SK, which SK. is N-O-O-M dot com slash SK. And now SK. back to the show. Podcast. We talked about soaking a week or two ago? Yes, and my girlfriend at, told me to ask her about it, but I didn't think we were going to come back to it. What did she say, Angel? I didn't Hold ask up, Angel. her. I'm going to oh, ask her Oh, I thought now. you said... Well, no, because she. by the time she responded, we were done with the podcast, and I was just like, well, we're not going to go back to it. Okay, I'm about to ask her now, though. Okay, so while you're asking her, the BYU Virginity Club, uh, they spoke out. Come on, extracurricular? They had a... <laughs> They said they had a little four panel thing on uh, Instagram said, what does the Bible say about soaking? Uh, oh, I'm out of order. Uh, in the last month, a new sensation called soaking has rocked the nation. Other names for this practice include marinating, fermenting, and stewing. Hold on. Oh, not stewing. That one, the marinating killed me. I was like, <laughs> "Can you imagine hitting a girl? Come on, girl, let me marinate." I, we ain't got the jump pump. Spanish, because uh, a lot of times you can go into like meat markets, um, and you can get like on the by itself, or what they call preparada, and that's when they like <laughs> marinate it. So we'd probably say uh, preparada just to be, you know, just. We hit that preparada, and el cuche. <laughs> uh, stewing, marinating, and fermenting. Fermenting means you in there for a minute. Now marinating is just twenty four hours. You know that's brining. You might, you might. Fermentation is a process. Yes, that's not overnight. That's a couple days. <laughs> Let me sit up in that thing, okay, till it goes off. Uh, but the truth is, soaking, jump humping, and other variants are an affront to God. The Bible warned of false prophets who come to us when we are most vulnerable and preach immorality as virtue, virtue. Um, instead of soaking, this is where they get to the word. No, come on. Instead of soaking, try basking in the light of the Lord. Hey. Instead of jump humping, try jumping to your feet to yeah. sing God's holy hymn. You better try oh. jump Humping the law. How about jump him? Can you imagine getting ready to have you a session? Okay. You know that you you naked, the man naked, he coming over to soak. He got the marinade. And then he coming, he's like, you know what, Angel? Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. I can't soak with you. Bless that oh, wonderful Jesus. name, Jesus. G- listen, ain't nothing changed over here. <laughs> Get in here. Bless that wonderful <laughs> name. <laughs> You can bless him afterwards. You, Jesus, no other name I, I know. know. Listen, we, nah. in my religion, we, you know, I, I, I erred on the side of grace. Uh huh. You know, I, I talked about it in the soaking. I, I want, I'm gonna come to church guilty. Yes, guilty as charged. You're going Look, Sunday. I go to. You're going to be in the room. What you, y'all going to have altar call? Be before midweek. You might get two services after. Yes. Come on, man. Yeah. What's the point? The Bible said born into sin. Yeah. If I'm going to feel guilty, let me really feel guilty. Let me, oh, let me feel disgusted, like, Lord. Oh, Lord, uh, I can't get right, huh? I, just, I can't get right. I used to have this, <laughs> to have this joke early in my stand-up comedy career. <laughs> Said, so do you say grace before you eat coochie? Because I needed to be blessed. <laughs> Father God, we bless you for this meal we're about to receive. Anointed God, I'm finna stew in the oh, marination. Never that you have to pray. Father God, I want you to anoint this peach. 
Ah! Oh, yeah. I don't normally eat cat, but when I do, I want it to be, I want it to be blessed. Never. I want it to be clean yeah, in the camp. I don't normally camp. eat cats. Yeah, that most. No. Now, I know I'm wrong, God. He swatted that prayer down. No, he did it. It snuck around. It went up to heaven. <laughs> God, let me see heaven. <laughs> I am a sinner in need of his grace, God. That, I used to blame God. This is really your fault. Is it his fault? Yeah, you made the woman this way. I don't want to do this. You said we're born into sin. You could have born me anyway. Oh. You could have gave me. I could have been. Oh, I don't want. I don't want to soak, Lord. I don't want. But you, you gave us that sinful give me nature. Dry rub. Don't give me something to soak in. Yeah, oh. give me dry rub. Yes, it is. It is. You be wondering. Now I got to cover it in the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> cover it in the anointing. Yeah. I'm telling you, the David. Prophet. Now you told me the Bible says David was a man after your own heart. David uh, went over oh, there and took Bathsheba. He get, was not soaking. He was straight up. He was stroking. <laughs> yes. David was a wild boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Was David like, was a wild boy, bro. Who that baddie over there with the fatty in the in the bathtub? The Where her husband? Fatty. Put that put that nigga on the front line. So, shoot, get him shot. <laughs> you know, dumber and dumber when <laughs> they're fighting at the end. He goes, why did I get a gun? He was like, well, we didn't think you'd be ready. He was like. Kill him, kill him. <laughs> David was wild. Oh, yeah. Not only did he take Bathsheba against her consent, he sent her husband to the front line and take his sword. Yes. I want him dead. D- let him die. Let him die. Send him out there with Bathsheba the paper. Was just like. And then he went to Bathsheba's house. Her husband died. Oh, that's oh, crazy. Oh, rumph. Oh, rumph. Anyway, come oh. on in. <laughs> Come I mean, on. she's had to feel just terrible. Come on in and soak with the king. And you couldn't turn the king down. No. Candace Bimbo told me that. Mm-mm. You couldn't turn the king down. No. Come on in and soak with me, daughter. I know. What are you, yeah, what are you grieving? Come ugly here. and stinky. You just got to be like, okay. He was like, yeah, come here, Bathsheba. Don't do that to, to Grogu. <laughs> Don't do that to Grogu. I'm just, it's heavily implied. <laughs> I'm sorry, Never bro. it's heavily implied. Go, Grogu's genderless. He don't know or she don't know. But anyway, they did, um, and that was a man after God's own heart. Solomon, he was oh, right about a garden. He wasn't talking about no peppers. He was, he was right from experience. He was like, girl, I want to I wanna lick from the garden. What fruit are you licking? Boy, this is coochie. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, fru- the coochie uh, fruit. Mm-hmm. I lick. They're talking about that. Talk about the bush. Yeah. That bird- from the, the bushy garden. You know them Bible girls did not shave. No, yeah, yeah. Cause if you to, really, you had to prove you wanted it. Yeah, you, you go on that safari. Whew, where's my machete? She, <laughs> she, she, you got to go to that safari. Look at you. Yeah, that sea scrolls was a map of the coochie. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. And you got to listen. You had to see that Bathsheba. You know them Bible girls. They had that thing. You had to see it through burlap. Mm-hmm. Said, Ooh, you, ain't that's no fashion you, nova that's how you knew they had a thumper you, you can see that, it through back burlap you can see that thing through burlap that's something Woo! that's something she carrying something right that there. girl she got booty in right burlap. Burlap. burlap that girl got sunglasses. booty in burlap that girl got booty Is in it? burlap she's sitting on the thing we're not putting that on that girl album. got booty in burlap <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that girl got booty in going on the unruly booty no. burlap they had burlap thongs no, they were no, just, was. they were going drawless. Yeah, they was. That's, I that thing was for a minute. Biblical men. times. Huh? I said, I believe in biblical times. No draws, just everybody out here. Just must. Just easy access. All just that walking? Burlap sundress must. That, but see, they didn't have thighs back then because they walked everywhere. Oh, they did it. Yes. But them nethers, that part going to connect. Oh, <laughs> don't do that. This part going to connect regardless if you got big legs or small. Yeah, girl, you been, well, you came from Galilee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You walked. We don't got baths and we showers got, like that. We got to ask Cisco to flip the thong song for a burlap thong. That. Burlap thong. <laughs> booty in burlap. I like it when your booty goes. <laughs> Baby, make that booty go. Oh, that burlap thong. thong. Yeah. He would like it. He'd be like, he yeah, would. guys, let's <laughs> do it. Let's do it. I'm going to hit up Cole. Yes. Hey, Coach, it's your boy Kev. I just got an idea. I don't know. That is a lot of actual discipline to actually insert your 
penis or be inserted by a penis and say, I'm st- we're still not going to go through with the whole act, mm-hmm. that takes more discipline than just saying no. I, to listen. be like, I'm going to take pizza, <laughs> put it in my mouth. Don't I chew it. Go, I ain't going to chew it. I ain't going to swallow it. I'm just going to wait my hell. But that is not, I'm going to eat the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not chewing. Somebody else is doing this. <laughs> right, exactly. Somebody else is doing this. I wonder if soaking throat. applies to like oral sex. Can you just put your tongue there and just hold it? Because I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not moving it. I'm not licking. A lick is. I don't think your tongue ever stops moving. Well, though. No, it does. If you just. It's, the, it's, the, it's somebody's. And it's just sitting in that cooch. Like a thermometer. Somebody going to fart eventually. You can't just stay there. <laughs> why would, you, so why would that be the first thing that happens? Yes, eventually it's just that it, you're just going to be like, your body's going to be like something needs to happen. Pedro goes, I fart every nine minutes on the night. <laughs> yes. Man. I'm going to fart. Do, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. I, that a, just little, takes, a little piddle? A little pss, pss, That's even, that's. Oh, yeah. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> that just takes too much discipline. I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't. That's a good point. Somebody said, would you need a jump humper for oral? I'm not I moving my mouth. I think things are going to go wrong. You're thinking about for a dude, but as a woman, you would not want, if a woman was giving oral, jumping is not going to give no. the dude what he needs because there's going to be teeth coming down. Oh, man. This is just no, not you need a work. head person. Somebody washing your hair. You, that's what it is. That's what you... <laughs> There you go. Somebody washing your hair. I wasn't oral. That was I. It was my wash day. Yes. So what? I had a penis in my mouth. <laughs> just a conditioner. Purely condition. Purely coincidental. What'd you say, Josh? Just a leaving conditioner day. <laughs> right. That's it. Working this dandruff off this. That's all, I was getting my hair washed. You gonna hold that against me? <laughs> I have an oily scalp. Why do I always wash it when penises are around? Purely coincidental. God just, made it oily. It's on you, big it. guy. It's on. It's on you. Big it's guy. the salon. It's penis and pinups. It's just. <laughs> it's a part of the service. Oh. Penis and perms. By the way, on that same Instagram, in the BYU Virginity Club, and I looked this up because at first I thought it was a, uh, I thought it was a parody. Let me see if I can find it. They, somebody asked a question, do I need to remain abstinent even after marriage? Mm -hmm. And then the people answered over the last year, our club has featured several couples who have chosen to remain abstinent even after marriage. However, this has led some to wonder whether all couples are expected to remain celibate after marriage. The Bible says, do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourself to prayer, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. In other words, while you and your spouse may choose to practice celibacy celibacy for a period of time in order to grow closer to God, married couples are not meant to remain absent in the long term, lest they give in to temptation. Like any ideological motivated movement, our group features a wide range of ideological beliefs. Some members take their virginity to the extreme, saving it for as long as possible, even after marriage. This is commendable, but no one should feel obligated, feel any obligation to undertake the same feat. What is the point? That's what I'm saying. What is the point? We grew up in a better to marry than to burn thing, which was like, I don't know the what the dumbest. scripture really meant, but we meant that as just go on and do it. But and then that's why people end up getting divorced. 1,000%. It's just like, what? You're going to burn regardless. You're going to burn <laughs> with a different type of thing. Yes. Oh, that was, I yes. can't imagine getting married and then being like, you know what? I mean, after all these years. We didn't soak, so why? why? There's no thoke. No soak, no thoke. Let's just keep praying. Let's just keep. Uh, if you had to be celibate for a, a while after getting married. I would I would perish. I wouldn't get married. What's the point? I'd be like, well, I'm just going to be a hoe out here. <laughs> you can go the whole go, other I'm way? Just, I'm just going to hoe because none of this makes sense. That's what I would say. This is all lies. It's this all lies. Not, now I'm just having to be told what I should and shouldn't be doing by another adult that I'm married to. I could just be out here being single, hoeing, and then I'd be fine. No, no. That's what women who are saving themselves for marriage, they save themselves to be 
hoish with their husbands. <laughs> yeah. They don't save themselves to continue to be pure for their husbands. Mm-hmm. We're like, okay, now I'm letting all the freak out the bag. What can we get? What can we get away with? <laughs> me and you. What can we get away with? Not. Well, let me just do the same crap I was doing before I met you. No. I'm, this is the last one on BYU Virgin. I didn't even see this one. Um, what does the Bible say about hot girl summer? After a year and a half of quarantine, some adults are looking forward to the summer of sun, skin, and S-E-U-X. So, I don't know what that means. But the Bible warns us against the sinful nature of hot girl summer. The acts of flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Instead of hot girl summer, try practicing pious girl summer or pious. Pious girl summer. pious. Pious, pious girl summer, a summer full of scripture, sun, and self-improvement through religious piety. And remember, modest is hottest. Modest is hottest. Modest is hottest. No. Join the virginity club. No. I just, it's not the same. I couldn't be on the virginity club just because somebody said modest is hottest. If that was in a pamphlet, I'd be like, I'm that out. That can't be a reason. If you say modest you got, is hottest you got to reasons me. reasons I respect it. Yeah. Modest is hottest is not the... Word of my side. I'm not doing both. I'm not going to deny myself the pleasure that I know my other friends are having by having the sex and then also dressing like a nun. No. But Angel, modest is hottest. Mm-mm. And cheeks are, are great. <laughs> Couldn't think of a, a rhyme word. These cheeks is going to be out. These, these abs are going to be shown. I'm not going to let nobody up in me. Cheeks are great. But I am going to put this on display. I'm putting it on display. (laughs) And see, you know what? This is the thing. This is what pisses me off. What pisses you off, Angel? Is that the church be lying to women. What they lie about? Is that they set us up to believe that this this extreme, modest, ladylike thing is going to be rewarded by the man that finds us. The Christian man. But Christian men... Be liking sexy looking women. Mm-hmm. When we, I, that's why so many people were mad when Devon Franklin married uh, Megan, Meg, Good. Megan Good. Look at her. <laughs> that is why he's like, I can pray for myself. I've been doing real good. I know the word for myself. I'll teach her if she don't know already. <laughs> said, Look at her. I'll but, teach her. But, the, the, but I can understand why there were certain uh, church women that felt kind of salty because they just like, no, what are you doing? They I've thought been after these all that. long skirts that have no shape to them. <laughs> you wouldn't know if I was a size two or a size 20 underneath here because what I'm wearing is so big and so not form fitting. These flats that I've been wearing because I can't have my calves popping because that's too sexual for the men of the church. Yeah. And when that's not rewarded, you thinking you about to have me miss my hot girl summers when I could have got somebody. Mm-hmm. But they be thinking only thugs want that. No, the church men be wanting it too. The ones that be speaking in tongues, they want to speak in tongues all over their body. Hey. Okay. And then you look at your life and you just like, why was I lied to? That's true. You want to have this, you, you think about growing up as a a church girl, you think about, oh, one day I'm going to have a husband. I'm going to have kids. We're going to have family pictures. Maybe we'll uh, send the family pictures off to paint your life and we'll have that up on our wall. And you have this whole painting in your head and it don't turn out right. It will turn out right though. If you use and paint your life. Because paint your life, they want to make sure that your great gift idea, whether it be for birthdays, anniversaries, or weddings, can be beautiful, memorable, and not expensive. Okay, we're talking about quality, okay, and not quantity and money because they make sure it's affordable. Paint your life allows you to take a picture or pictures and they make them into hand-painted portraits. So you can um, take actually two separate pictures, combine it to make a new picture, or just take one. Kevin, I know, has one of his family, of him, Melissa, and the boys that he got painted from a portrait they have. He also gave one away for a gift. It's really nice because you it, it feels thoughtful more than just framing a photograph. It feels thoughtful to have an artistic expression of this painting. 
to be able to give to someone. Um, and it feels like one of a kind where, you know, when you get proofs of a photo, yeah, you know, it took a printer a couple of seconds to print it off. But when you have an artist who is skilled that is using their artistic expression to bring your portrait to life, it's just something beautiful that you just can't, you can't really put value on it. It's um, it's something that you that any person would love to receive as a gift. Um, the finished product uh, you can get in as little as two weeks. Two and weeks, Angel. Two weeks, just in time for the holiday Almost season. Right. Coming yes. right around the corner, Angel. Right it's around crazy. the corner. Coming, coming. Um, coming, coming, coming like them BYU girl. A uh, team of world class. Uh, you get to choose from a team of world class artists, and you work with them until every detail is perfect. So you're able to talk to them and be like, "Oh no, I really wanted this to have more of a bluer tone to it. That was my mom's favorite color. You know, things like that." You're able to be. Uh, have that type of conversation so you can get the gift that you really want to give. It's perfect for birthdays, anniversaries, wedding gifts. It's meaningful, personal, and can be cherished forever. This is what we want you to do. At paintyourlife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now, as a limited offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right. 20% off and free shipping. <laughs> to get this special offer, Text the word SK, SK. to 64,000. 64,000. That's SK to 64,000. Text SK to 64,000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Again, text SK, SK. to 64,000. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. All right, moving on. I saw this on the interwebs. Uh, people, girls in a couple, she places an order on Uber Eats. She messages, messages the driver. Sorry for my lisp. She messages the driver. Don't you apologize for that lisp. Right, Angel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for apologizing about the lisp. <laughs> I am no longer sorry about the lisp. I mean, I'm sorry for apologizing or don't apologize for the apology. Mm. Don't apologize at all. Shut up. Okay. The lady <laughs> places the order on <laughs> Uber Eats. And then text the driver this. Hi, I just placed the De Del Taco order, which is Josh's place. I don't want this actually delivered. There's a $10 tip built in and keep the queso. My husband is supposed to be home alone while I'm visiting family. I just need to know what cars are in the driveway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I know I sound crazy. For the love of God, please don't actually deliver this. The driver responds. So just to clarify, you don't want me to deliver the food. You just want me to drive by the house at the address you gave and let you know what cars are in the driveway. The person responds, yes, keep the food. And I added the $10 tip when I placed the order. Uh, driver responds, all right then, I'm in line at Del Taco right now, but I'll let you know once I go by. And the question posed is. It's like, um, they're out of strawberry lemonade. Do I still order that? Can you please make a change? Order whatever you want. How, <laughs> as an admittedly jealous person, mm -hmm. as I am as well, mm -hmm. Um, we both were quite upset at this recent weekend's festivities mm -hmm. by the home team. If you're not familiar, uh, oh. with the home team, this is, uh, uh, uh Melissa, mm -hmm. Marcus, mm -hmm. Melanie, mm -hmm. who are the spouses of me, uh, Angel and Greg on the tour. Also Danny Rose, uh, friend of the family, friend of the pod and Farron, who is also who is the a wife spouse of Tahir. Mm -hmm. Um, they went out to dinner on Friday. Yes, they did. Had a great time. Mm -hmm. And then they went to my house the next day mm -hmm. and had a cinnamon roll bake off. Angel. Yes, they did. Yes, they, did. they had a, oh, they had big fun down in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they was having fun. I mean, it, it's the movie scene. Throwing flour. Oh, yeah. Taste test. Mm -hmm. Marcus made bourbon. Uh, uh, yeah. Cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. rolls. Uh -huh. Melissa made salted pecan or salted caramel pecan. Mel is pregnant. They all yeah. tasted them. Had a great time. All the kids were there. All the kids. Amar Monty was running there. around. Amar was in the ring. No. Apparently, they figured out how to open my front door, which is amazing. Yes. Considering how high the knob is to him, they're like, "Hey, Amar's outside." Yeah. He was. He was. He was gerrymandering. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, He's got mm -hmm. constituents in our neighborhood, and anyway, so we're both admittedly jealous people. In your jealousy, do you think you could ever bring yourself? Yes. <laughs> Next question. Would you really, Angel? Yes. <laughs> yep. You don't. 
Is that a surprise? Angel's petty. I thought Angel would be like, if I got Angel to be in this, I would. a first class ticket so I couldn't get a free upgrade. That's how petty she is. Yes. And she waited till the last minute and sang a song while she walked down the, no, did the nay bow, I say, bow, bow. twerk down the jetway. Oh, that was iconic. It was iconic. This you you had master. nothing but to, you could do nothing but respect no. her. <laughs> so you would send a Del Taco yes. by? Uh, any of them. Really? Yes. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Angel! First of all, you know that anytime there are people at my house, I am talking to them. Oh, you be on, on that. The, uh, what you doing there? You sure? Why do. Marcus have you come over? What y'all about to do? <laughs> That's why she stays huh? on that. She stays on that little uh, doorbell. Uh, who? What you? Huh? She's the one. It doesn't make an automated noise. She's the one that goes. <laughs> 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 That's me. <laughs> hey, hey, he'll be right I'm down. Watching live. <laughs> it doesn't even have a chance to She's deter the you. Official spokesperson hey. for Vivid. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I would actually pay for that feature to have Angel's voice on the. Oh. What you doing? Out there? What you doing? Josh gonna be down for us in a second. Josh, <laughs> company, not company. Oh, Only black I think people. This is my Mormon friend. Hold on. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm really jealous. This is very clever. Mm. Uh, I don't think I could bring myself to do it. It ain't her. It wasn't her. It was from Idaho, so I thought it was her, but it uh, wasn't. I don't think I have it in my, uh, I don't have it in my ability because I have a security camera, so I don't need well, it. Well, I mean, now, yes, yes. I mean, I, I mean not, not, not in the garage door. Not in the garage door. Not, well, not my security the, camera covers the, the property. <laughs> surely did. Somebody brought it up. So there was a person at the Bake Off I didn't know. When Danny picked up the camera, I had a 360 view. So I typed in oh, the so chat. It was a plus one. It was a plus one. Why are he trying to call me? I ain't picking up. Who's that? Marcus. No, Marcus. Marcus this out. is our time, yeah, man. You're yeah. out. Yeah, you're the one complaining. Oh, it's a boring podcast. Now you want to call in? Surprise! Yes, he, he said, said that. Yes, he said, yes, that he said that in the comments. Us. He said that he in our podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw. Let me block him. Marcus. He yeah, said, ahead. "Let me block him." You know what we need? We need we need a way team, uh, Letterman's jackets. Mm -hmm. We need jerseys. We should get. I'm so afraid if we get that though, what Melissa will be like. Oh, they got Letterman's jackets? No. We're getting this. Melissa's we need to get neck tattoos. As well. <laughs> no, that's we need what to I get said. neck tattoos that say yeah. away team with so a little no. uh, airplane. I was like, who? I asked in the, the chat. The thing that bothers me the most, Angel, I ain't going to hold you, the stage crew, okay? They came up with the emoji and everything. They are overwhelmingly home team. Oh, yeah. What yeah. have we done? I don't know. That y'all have chosen sides this way. We, oh, because nothing, they went live? Nothing but work. All we do is go and and we and go to them. We go to their home. We come to your city. Do you come to LA and visit us? No. We go to Greenville, South Carolina. We go to the Mall of America and sit in the green room that's in the back of the mall with rat traps, with rat traps and plates and we a sink a that drains into a bucket in Greenville. <laughs> A janitorial closet, and when given the option, you choose the home team. You. Ungrateful. <laughs> you remember Denzel and Trade Mouth? Yes. A trading yes, day? Yes. You foul mouth. Yes. They just live here. Yes. <laughs> we travel to see you. Yes. Shoe program, nigga. <laughs> 24 hour lockdown. How dare you? Just, After all these years, uh, uh, uh. Steve, you lying to see for bastard. <laughs> After all these years, you left me to pursue a career in the hallways of academia. You lying bastard. Stage yeah. crew, you, <laughs> you guys are bastard. disloyal. I'm How getting, dare you? I'm getting an I just, airplane tattooed across my shoulders. Choose the home team just because they made cinnamon rolls. I'm going to get my sky mouse number. No, don't right put here. our clack, emoji clack, in. Clack. Take the airplane emojis out. We like home. What's, what is what is the problem? We go out. This is the equivalent of us going out to war. We go out to fight war to we protect did. our country. We're and we're like we're the soldier's the wives club and husband. I was. Uh, We're out there, Angel, risking our lives. Enough risking is enough. Fighting against a, COVID. A group of girls almost got in a fight in front of Greg. Yes. We were in danger. In danger. And the home team at the same time is baking cinnamon and rolls. Cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon. What'd I say? Is that thing you might have no, said, you said cinnamon? It, Kevin? I said it. Hmm. I said it. 
What I say? Seminent? I did say seminent. Greg is being accosted by men being told he has good <laughs> sexual energy. And y'all choose people for cinnamon roll? Why well, can't say that? <laughs> for baked goods? Why well, can't say cinnamon? So I don't know. Said it. I'm gonna No, Marcus! No FaceTime. I'm going to cry into my Gucci boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Hold on, no. I'm going to answer him. What do you want, Marcus? Huh? Yes, I'm watching. I decided to tune in on your little boring podcast. Oh, now it's a boring podcast. Hang that phone You're up. have an entire show based on having fun. He keeps Honey, trying to say yay. that the, the, uh, the uh, challenge oh. show. Is the fun. fun. We're gonna do it live. Marcus. That is work. (laughs) You guys just said, let's meet up and bake. I don't care. Oh, you're gonna regret this. I'm gonna go have the time of my life. (laughs) I'm gonna cancel shows. We're gonna go the the whole Ohio weekend with Oklahoma City. You're in Dubai. (laughs) Ohio, you're out. I told them, and this, I'm going to tell you to your face, Marcus. After I hang up on you, I'm calling my agent. Get me a show in Paris, France. We I don't win. care if one person shows up. We're going to Oklahoma. The whole team is going to go to all the shows you can. You're not. You're, we're going international. I'm going to London. I'm going yes. to France. Yes. And you guys, and I'm not going to tell you. You think we're going to Oklahoma City? There will be bomb threats to the <laughs> First class to France, Marcus. France! (laughs) Bye! Bye! How dare you call me? I can't press the button hard enough. (laughs) Yeah, they would just be having way too much fun. I mean, I was... He really feels like that the the challenge show is the equivalent. It's... (laughs) I still have the bruises from paintball. Do you really? Yes! Y'all hurt me. It is work! I said, they wouldn't give me a chair. They wouldn't give Angela a chair. It was hot. It was hot. I got hit by dodgeballs. We are just trying to make the the best out of, we're I mean, just farmers. we're just content <laughs> farmers. No. And they, when we go to work, this is like in the 50s, the husband's to work and the wives came over. And when the yes. husbands came back, okay, 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 I got to get dinner on the table. <laughs> we play. It's really, I, don't under, I, I don't mind our spouses doing this. It's really the stage crew I'm upset about. Uh-huh. They chose sides. They did. They ch- Don't take no more pictures. You're out. <laughs> You're out. No pictures. But come buy these shirts, though. <laughs> <laughs> come buy these shirts so we can continue to make money. And well, actually, our wives and husbands. Make oh, money. yeah. So, let me, uh, so there was a girl that was there at the, the baking thing, and I don't know who she was. And so I typed into the oh, comments. Oh, yeah. I forgot I about that. I typed into the comments. I was like, hey, guys, who is... Who is the extra person? I'm thinking she'd already been introduced. They were like, we don't know. And, and then all of a sudden, they could hear the phone ringing through the thing. It was Mark speaking. I was like, hey, who is that? <laughs> I was like, who is that woman that is in there that I don't know? Because you, you got to make sure you got to clear the room. I, got oh. to, I know they need to know who all is up. If Marcus saw me on camera... And he thought I was just gonna be with y'all, but there was some extra niggas. A random in there. dude in the back. Who, yeah. who's, who's extra nigga? Who is that? Oh, that's just. <laughs> I didn't know who she was for a minute. Um, it turned out to be Mel's homegirl. She had a yeah. baby, uh, but from the the live was um, she was just like. Yes. Just the camera thought, just oh. you know what I'm saying felt like you saw something you weren't supposed to see. Yeah, I was like, who was that? <laughs> Let me tell you what's gonna Angel's hurt about worse. to fly back. What's going to hurt worse is when, when Greg changes up on us and he joins the home team. Oh, better no. Not. He better not. You know he will. He, he better. Absolutely. Mel is having a baby. Y'all, that baby don't need to be out in the cold. Yeah, he's got to stay Greg is going to be staying home with that baby. They better but not. But they can't have people over. They can't have people stuff. over. The baby needs to rest. The baby Mel needs, needs to, to rest, rest until she's at least two or until our tour is over until the tour whichever is over. comes first yes. <laughs> if they have a party with that baby the thing that made me the most upset this is the thing that bothered me angel this was one of the few weeks that we actually came home on a on sunday, a sunday. yeah they could have waited they could have waited. waited one more day i would have loved we saw, we saw this the last night we were there oh and then you know, and Minnesota was you know, hey, it was Minnesota. It was Minnesota. It was Minnesota. More like Minnesota. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that was funny, Josh. Yeah, yes. mean. So anyway, stage crew, you're out. Don't you guys don't put no airplane emojis in the chat. You guys are out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are out. Forget you. You've made your choice. 
You made your choice. I was going to go live yesterday on my Patreon. And I was like, no. <laughs> you had a great time at your little friend's house on Friday, yeah, didn't you? Had a good had time. Had a good time with your little friends on Friday. No, that's your life. Mm-hmm. Y'all had a great, oh, y'all was live three, four hours. <laughs> Mm, you don't need me. You three or four. You don't need no. You don't need four. You don't need no calf. No podcast. It was no podcast. Three, I mean, over three hours. Just laughing. <laughs> Kiki. Wow. Throw it. I hid Marcus's dough. <laughs> funny, funny time. <laughs> But I told this is what really pissed me off. I said it when they were at the house. I said, this is what pissed me off is that this is the idea that I would have. I'd be like, let's do a bake off. And Marcus would be like, I ain't doing that stupid mess. <laughs> That's what he would say to me. He said, you're absolutely right. And he owned it. Yes. When, the, when, when the home team says he puts the hat on. He had on he the had floral. Oh, the hat. He oh. had on the floral apron. He had the. Why do we have props? The whole thing. Props? I, he Chef would hats never, always look fun. He would have never done that with me. Never. And look, his little homegirls come on over. I mean, everybody's over. Monty's rolling around. He don't even remember me you no more. I came do? home to pet Monty. He was like, this is home team, nigga. I said, Monty. I know what I'm going to do. Why to get are you back smoking? We're going to an old car show and we're oh. going to smoke cigars. And, and Basil Hayden. And drink Basil Hayden. And I hate it. I'll throw it up, but I'll drink it to get back at him. <laughs> And I'll sit outside. Those are the things he likes to do. Sit outside. Look at old cars. We should rent them. Yes. Drive them around. Drive them in cruise. Yes. And wear the hats. Yes. Smoke. The dog turned on me. Yeah. He's got a tattoo. Says... (laughs) Real pup home team. Mark so said, I hope team. you guys crosses, have the best time. shoulders, it says rough life. <laughs> <laughs> rough. Because the bark, is that what the joke yeah, was? Yeah, because okay. it's, instead of like thug life, it's rough It's life, rough. Are you know? Tupac, Tupac had it across the stomach. He might. Um, anyway. Monty's got his thing there, though. <sighs> Heads will roll. Heads will roll. We've got, what, two months left? Solid months. November yeah. is... Dedicated for the road. November, we have 11 days. That we are away and from two home. full oh. off days. Oh, the only bad thing is it is in Ohio. That's all right. I we started looking at it. stuff and, and Google was like, nigga, it's Ohio. <laughs> come on, guys. You might, y'all might have to take a quick flight yeah, to a guys, real But the 11 days, they're going to come up with something crazy to do. Oh, but you know what? Is that the beginning of November? Yeah. 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 Oh, like no, fit. Marcus ain't going to be able to have that much fun because our sitter is not going to be home. <sighs> Unfortunate. Oh, man. Huh. He's going to stand with the kids. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys later. Maybe maybe we'll go live on the Patreon. Maybe last week's live was enough. Okay? <laughs> maybe you'll just see the episode when it comes out on Thursday since you want to have big fun down in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went down to Baltimore? You had big fun. Big Claire Hudson was so mad at her. Big you had fun big fun in down in Baltimore. Baltimore. <laughs> I get it. Shoot. Uh, anyway, we don't love y'all. I was going to say it. I don't feel the love today. Okay, can you feel the love tonight? Yeah, no. Can you feel the love tonight? We'll see how I feel yeah, no. in next week. <laughs> Bye. Good day. Bye. Bye. I said good day. I said good day, sir. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. Yeah. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another one. Yeah. Here's another bang of fire. Fire. Uh, uh, uh. Here's another bang of fire. Uh, with my boy Kevin Stay. And that chick angel.